The new science Italian, Scienza Nuova pronounce Enza and WVA is the major work of Italian philosopher Giambattista Vico, published in 1725. It has been highly influential in the philosophy of history, sociology, anthropology, and for historicists like Isaiah Berlin and Hayden White. The central concepts were highly original, and prefigured the Age of Enlightenment. The original full title is Principi di Scienza Nuova d'Intorno alla Comune Natura del Nazioni, which may be literally translated as Principles, Origins of New, Renewed Science About, Surrounding the Common Nature of Nations. Topic: <laughs> Production and Publication. In 1720, Vico began work on the Scienza Nuova as part of a treatise on universal rights. Although a full volume was originally to be sponsored by Cardinal Corsini, the future Pope Clement XII, Vico was forced to finance the publication himself after the cardinal pleaded financial difficulty and withdrew his patronage. The first edition of the new science Scienza Nuova, rather than Nuova Scienza, for which Galileo had been known, appeared in 1725, and a second, reworked version was published in 1730, neither was well received during Vico's lifetime. Vico himself worked on two revisited editions, that were published under new titles, the first in 1730 and the second posthumously in 1744. It was the first work by Vico to be written in Italian, while his previous ones were written in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> Approach, style and tone In its first section, titled, Idea of the Work, Idea dell'Opera, the Scienza Nuova 1730 and 1744 explicitly presents itself as a science of reasoning, Scienza di Ragionare. Indeed, the work, cf., most notably the section, of the elements, includes a dialectic between axioms, authoritative maxims or degnita, and reasonings. Ragionamenti linking and clarifying the axioms. Vico begins his third edition of New Science with a detailed close reading of a front piece portrait in order to expiate the place of Gentile nations within the providential guidance of the Hebrew God. This portrait contains a number of images that are symbolically ascribed to the flow of human history. Prominently in the photo is a triangle with the all-seeing eye top left. From its eye emanates a beam of light onto a brooch attached to the breastplate of the Lady with the Winged Temples who surmounts the celestial globe or world of nature which represents metaphysic center-right. The beam of light reflects off of metaphysics brooch onto the back of a robed character standing upon a pedestal bottom left. This figure represents the philosopher Homer. All around these main characters resides a variety of objects that represent the stages of human history which Vico categorizes into three epochs, the Age of the Gods in which the Gentiles believed they lived under divine governments, and everything was commanded them by auspices and oracles, which are the oldest institutions in profane history, the Age of the Heroes in which they reigned everywhere in aristocratic commonwealths, on account of a certain superiority of nature which they held themselves to have over the plebs or peasants, and the Age of Men in which all men recognized themselves as equal in human nature, and therefore there were established first the popular commonwealths and then the monarchies, both of which are forms of human government. This demonstrates Vico's contribution to philosophy of history. By viewing these principles as universal phenomena which combined nature and government with language and philology, Vico could insert the history of the Gentile nations into the supreme guidance by divine providence. The end for government, according to Vico, resulted with each society entering into a state of universal equity. The last type of jurisprudence was that of natural equity, which reigns naturally in the free commonwealths, in which the people, each for his own particular good, without understanding that it is the same for all, are led to command universal laws. They naturally desire these laws to bend benignly to the least details of matters calling for equal unity. Vico specifies that his scienza Reasons primarily about the function of religion in the human world, idea of the work, and in this respect the work, comes to be a civil theology reasoned from divine providence. 
Vin ad essere una teologia civil ragionata della provvidenza divina. Reconsidering divine things, viz. the conduct of divine providence. Within a human or political context, Vico unearths the poetic theologians of pagan antiquity, exposing the poetic character of theology independently of Christianity's sacred history and thus of biblical authority of the elements. CXIV. Vico's unearthing of poetic theology anticipated already in his De Antiquissima Italorum Sapientia on the most ancient wisdom of the Italians", confirms the philosopher's ties to the Italian Renaissance and its appeals to Theologia Poetica. With the early Renaissance, Vico shares the call for recovering a «pagan» or «vulgar» horizon for philosophy's providential agency, or for recognizing the providence of our human «metaphysical» minds, menti in the world of our «political» wills, anime idea of the work. Pa. 2. Poetic theology. Would serve as stage for an. Ascent. Ibid. To recognize the inherence or latency of rational agency in our actions, even when these are brutal. See further. Of the method. Pa. 2. This way, the particular providence of the Bible's. True God. Of the elements. CXIV. Would not be required for the thriving of properly human life. All that would be needed was a false religions, gods and b the covert work of the conatus rational principle of constitution of experience rooted in its proper infinite form examined at length in the De Antiquissima Italorum Sapientia and evoked again in par. Two of the of the method section of the Cienza Nuova 1730 and 1744. Topic. Cyclical history Corsi e Ricorsi. Vico is often seen as espousing a cyclical philosophy of history where human history is created by man, although Vico never speaks of history without attributes. Paolo Cristofolini, Vice Pargano e Barbaro, but of a world of nations, which is more, in the 1744 Cienza Nuova, especially the Conclusion of the work. Vico stresses that the world of nations is made by men merely with respect to their sense of certainty, certamente, though not fundamentally, insofar as the world is guided by the human mind, metaphysically, independent of its makings. Compare opening paragraph of the Cienza Nuova. Furthermore, although Vico is often attributed the expression corsi e ricorsi. Cycles and counter cycles of history. He never speaks in the plural of the cycle or of the counter cycle. Recorso of human things, suggesting that political life and order, or human creations, are oriented backward, as it were, or called back to their constitutive metaphysical principle. On present day, constructivist. Readings, Vico is supposed to have promoted a vision of man and society as moving in parallel from barbarism to civilization. As societies become more developed socially, human nature also develops, and both manifest their development in changes in language, myth, folklore, economy, etc. In short, social change produces cultural change. Vico would therefore be using an original organic idea that culture is a system of socially produced and structured elements. Hence, knowledge of any society would come from the social structure of that society, explicable, therefore, only in terms of its own language. As such, one may find a dialectical relationship between language, knowledge and social structure, relying on a complex etymology. Vico argues in the Cienza Nuova that civilization develops in a recurring cycle ricorso of three ages, the divine, the heroic, and the human. Each age exhibits distinct political and social features and can be characterized by master tropes or figures of language. The giganti of the divine age rely on metaphor to compare, and thus comprehend, human and natural phenomena. In the heroic age, metonymy and synecdoche support the development of feudal or monarchic institutions embodied by idealized figures. 
The final age is characterized by popular democracy and reflection via irony. In this epoch, the rise of rationality leads to barbarie della riflessione or barbarism of reflection, and civilization descends once more into the poetic era. Taken together, the recurring cycle of three ages, common to every nation, constitutes for Vico a storia ideal eterna or ideal eternal history. Therefore, it can be said that all history is the history of the rise and fall of civilizations, for which Vico provides evidence up until, and including the Greco-Roman historians. <laughs> <laughs> Ideas on rhetoric applied to history Vico's humanism, his returning to a pre-modern form of reasoning, his interest in classical rhetoric and philology, and his response to Descartes contribute to the philosophical foundations for the second Scienza Nuova. Through an elaborate Latin etymology, Vico establishes not only the distinguishing features of first humans, but also how early civilization developed out of a sensus communis or common not collective sense. Beginning with the first form of authority intuited by the giganti or early humans and transposed in the first mute or sign language, Vico concludes that first, or vulgar, wisdom was poetic in nature. This observation is not an aesthetic one, but rather points to the capacity inherent in all men to imagine meaning via comparison and to reach a communal conscience or prejudice about their surroundings. The metaphors that define the poetic age gradually yield to the first civic discourse, finally leading to a time characterized by full-fledged reason, ragione tutta spiegata, in which reason and right are exposed to the point that they vanish into their own superficial appearance. At this point, speech returns to its primitive condition, and with it men. Hence the recurring recourse of life to barbarism, barbary. It is by way of warning his age and those stemming from it of the danger of seeking truth in clear and distinct ideas blinding us to the real depths of life, that Vico calls our attention back to a classical art of moderating the course of human things, lest the liberty enjoyed in the Republic be supplanted by the anarchic tyranny of the senses. Crucial to Vico's work remains a subtle criticism of all attempts to impose universality upon particularity, as if ex nihilo. Instead, Vico attempts to always let the true emerge from the certain through innumerable stories and anecdotes drawn mostly from the history of Greece and Rome and from the Bible. Here, reason does not attempt to overcome the poetic dimension of life and speech, but to moderate its impulses so as to safeguard civil life. While the transfer from divine to heroic to human ages is, for Vico, marked by shifts in the tropological nature of language, the inventional aspect of the poetic principle remains constant. When referring to poets, Vico intends to evoke the original Greek sense of creators. In the Scienza Nuova, then, the verum factum principle first put forth in De Italorum Sapientia remains central. As such, the notion of topics as the loci or places of invention put forth by Aristotle and developed throughout classical rhetoric serves as the foundation for the true, and thus, as the underlying principle of census communis and civic discourse. The development of laws that shape the social and political character of each age is informed as much by master tropes as by those topics deemed acceptable in each era. Thus, for the rudimentary civilization of the divine age, sensory topics are employed to develop laws applicable on an individual basis. These laws expand as metonymy and synecdoche enable notions of sovereign rule in the heroic age. Accordingly, acceptable topics expand to include notions of class and division. In the final, human age, the reflection that enables popular democracy requires appeals to any and all topics to achieve a common, rational law that is universally applicable. The development of civilization in Vico's Storia Ideal Eterna, then, is rooted in the first canon of rhetoric, as invention via loci shapes both the creation of and discourse about civil life. Reception and later influence Vico's major work was poorly received during his own life but has since inspired a cadre of famous thinkers and artists, including Karl Marx and Montesquieu. 
Later his work was received more favorably as in the case of Lord Monboddo to whom he was compared in a modern treatise. Isaiah Berlin has devoted attention to Vico as a critic of the Enlightenment and a significant humanist and culture theorist. Cienza Nuova was included by Martin Seymour Smith in his book The 100 Most Influential Books Ever Written. The historical cycle provides the structure for James Joyce's book, Finnegan's Wake. The intertextual relationship between Cienza Nuova and Finnegan's Wake was brought to light by Samuel Beckett in his essay, Dante. Bruno. Vico, Joyce published in our examination round his Factification for Incamination of Work in Progress, 1929, where Beckett argued that Vico's conception of language also had significant influence in Joyce's work. Vico's notion of the lingua mentale commune mental dictionary in relation to universale fantastico reverberates in Joyce's novel, which ends in the middle of a sentence, reasserting Vico's principle of cyclical history, language, knowledge and society are in a dialectical relationship, which means that any study or comparison of societies must consider the specific contexts of the societies. This has clearly influenced anthropology and sociology. Topic. See also Recapitulation theory De nostri temporae studiorum ratione Antipositivism Historicism Sociology of knowledge